Happy to be joined by UFC President Dana White. Happy belated birthday. Just turned 51. Low-key celebration because you're past that half-century mark? Yeah, it was, uh, it was the typical 51-year-old birthday. I worked, went home and had dinner with my kids and went to bed. So it doesn't get any, any more 51 than that. Well, we've got the Contender Series starting tomorrow night. Uh, it's running all the way through October, I think 10 weeks, which is pretty insane. Uh, you guys are going to grow this roster pretty large. How big do you think the roster is going to be after the Contender Series wraps up? It's a good question because we just made some cuts, but we didn't make a lot of cuts. You know, we, 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 uh, the roster is going to be big, but that's, that's, that's not a bad thing right now with what's going on. The Canadians that have participated on the Contender Series haven't had any success. We haven't had a single Canadian win yet on the Contender Series. Do you see that changing this time around? We've got some very intriguing prospects in the mix. Yeah, no, we're, I'm excited. I, I was actually talking about that earlier. You know, when you think about the GSP era, you know, and, and, and how well he did for, for, for Canada, you know, it would be nice to see somebody come along, you know, a, a real strong Canadian that can uh, carry the flag. You mentioned the GSP era. Is there a chance the GSP era gets elongated a little bit? Khabib's name uh, has named GSP several times in terms of a, a prospective opponent to wrap up his career. Is that something that you've been thinking at all about? Well, let's see what happens with Gaethje. You know, that fight's got to happen first. And, uh, you know, um, we just we just hired GSP. He's uh, he's the French commentator now for, for us. But, uh, you know, th that's that's more what I'd like to see GSP doing. You know, you don't see too many athletes who, who go out on top. GSP has done that and done it very well. He's got the money. He doesn't need the money. You know, he's, he's working for us now in, in a different capacity. And, uh, you know, I'd love to see him go out on top. Yeah, it was great to see GSP join the team uh, over at RDS. It's our sister network uh, in Quebec. Um, We've seen a lot of midweek cards uh, recently, Wednesday cards, and they follow a pretty good format. You know, they're, they're a little bit shorter. They've got a, a solid main event and then a lot of prospects on it. Is that a potential model for the future, is seeing more midweek events? No, I think that was just, uh, you know, you'll see some, some odd days when, um, you know, ESPN has, has a full roster, full commitment on, on, on the network. But uh, I, th I think we did those shows to catch up. You know, we, we, we had, uh, you know, we, we had to catch up after taking whatever it was, five or six weeks off from COVID. One of the big stars of Fight Island, you guys just returned from Fight Island, first event back in Vegas this past weekend, uh, is Hamzat Shemaev. He's an, a name that's been thrown around a lot. His social media presence has grown tremendously since uh, he's been fighting in the UFC. Do you worry that it's going to be difficult to get him fights with ranked opponents because of, of how well he's performing and people being unwilling to risk their ranking to face this guy? No. Listen, man, this is, this is the fight business. And, you, you know, if you think you belong in the top 15, then a guy who isn't ranked should not be a, a concern of yours. Plus, the guy's picked up so much traction and has become so famous so fast. It's, uh, it's a good fight to take. Hopefully, you're the guy that wants to be the first to stop them. Those are the kind of guys I want to talk to. I want to talk to the guys that, that want to be the first to stop Hamzat. His Instagram has grown 15,000%. <laughs> yeah, I saw his Twitter following went from like 200 to 40,000 in the span of two weeks. It's pretty remarkable. Um, how quickly do you want to progress this guy? Do you think that he's ready for a top 15 opponent right away? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if that's the case. Um, but uh, we're working on that right now. First, we got to figure out, you know, he, he, this guy wants to fight every weekend. He wants to fight every weekend. I love guys like that. So I, I got to figure that side out first. So did Gilbert Burns. Look where he's at now. I mean, he's going to be fighting for the championship soon. It's pretty impressive. Uh, so Fight Island, such a massive success for you guys. Uh, the bubble model really worked out. Was there even a single real positive test that, that came about on Fight Island? Or were you guys able to keep a completely clean bubble that entire time? Completely clean bubble, zero positive tests. Absolutely remarkable. And it looks like the NBA and NHL are having a lot of success right now with that same bubble model. MLB, not so much. But do you think that those two leagues uh, took a page out of the UFC's playbook uh, when implementing this thing? I don't know. I, I don't know if they did or didn't or whatever. I, yeah, I have no idea.
You've mentioned that Abu Dhabi could be the new fight capital of the world during this pandemic. How often do you think the UFC is going to go there until some semblance of normalcy is, is restored in, in America? A lot. We're going to be there all the time. This, this next stint we do over there, I'll probably end up spending five weeks there. And when you look at the level and the caliber of fights that are going to happen in Abu Dhabi, and, and we're working on lots of really cool things with these guys, it, it's definitely going to become the fight capital of the world, 100%. You go from smooth sailing at Fight Island to this past weekend, which uh, one of the most snake-bitten cards in recent memory. Um, can you remember a card like this in the past where you had so many different things happen in the span of a week, so many different scenarios pop up? Yeah, no. No, this one was definitely uh, very unique. Um, but, but, you know, that's this business. It's the way that it goes. And, um, you know, we're just going to have to deal with everything that's thrown at us. You mentioned that some of the fighters that were affected this past weekend that, that were available on fight night would get some of their show money, but not all of it. Uh, is, there like a, is that a case-by-case -case thing where you decide um, how much an individual fighter gets paid if they're not able to compete that night? Yeah, it's case-by-case. It's case. Yeah, listen, what you don't want to do, you know what happens normally when you don't fight. You don't get paid. I mean, that, that, that's how it works um, in the fight business. But, you know, we obviously want to make sure that, that these guys are taken care of and we'll turn them around as quick as possible and get them another fight. And finally, in terms of fights that are left on the schedule, you guys have uh, a lot of blockbuster events coming up. If you could choose just one, just one fight to watch uh, that you guys have scheduled right now, which one would it be? Out of all the fights that we have scheduled, what one do I want to watch? I only get to pick one. Just one. That's not fair. Well, <laughs> I can't wait to, to be. see... The, I can't wait... <laughs> I can't wait to see... <laughs> the trilogy with Miocic and Stipe. But I also want to see Ortega versus the zombie. I also want to see uh, Khabib and Gaethje. And I also want to see Adesanya versus Paulo Costa. So there's your answer. Well, my question wasn't fair. Your answer wasn't fair, but I'll take it. Uh, thanks for your time, Dana. Really appreciate it. Thank you.